Bill O'Reilly weighed in on Syria, and he showed himself yet again to just be a simpleton. I mean, his knowledge and understanding of history is comical. It honestly sounds like an eighth grader could have given the same speech that he gives. So let's listen, and then I'm going to give you a whole bunch of relevant facts. Okay, and Syria, that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Next month, we begin our 18th year here on The Factor, a very long ride. And from the beginning, from the beginning, one of my major themes has been the basic nobility of this country. That separates me from some on the left who think the USA is an exploitative place where the fix is in against the poor and working classes. Simply put, I believe America offers the greatest amount of people the best chance at a free and prosperous life. And tens of millions of immigrants agree with me. Folks ain't going to Cuba, China, or even Finland. Folks want to come here. Also, since World War II, the USA has literally freed hundreds of millions of people worldwide. We have righted many wrongs at great expense in our blood and treasure. That, of course, is noble. But now many Americans do not want to make that sacrifice any longer. Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, those theaters of war have hurt this country. Thousands of brave men and women were killed or maimed. Our treasury depleted. Thus, some Americans have had enough. They are now willing to let evil go unchallenged because there is a never-ending supply of it. But I say that we Americans still have a responsibility to stop mass murder when we can, as long as we don't damage our infrastructure in the process. Removing Saddam Hussein was noble, but the cost was too high. Giving the Afghan people a chance of freedom is noble, but the folks there may not care enough to embrace the opportunity. So what about Syria? No question the Syrian dictator Assad kills women and children at will. No question Iran is helping him do it. The evidence is strong that Assad violated the Geneva Convention by using poison gas to kill civilians. Thus, he is a war criminal. If the USA can punish Assad, we should. But we have to be smart about it. We can't direct his overthrow, but we can send a message to every tyrant in the world, slaughter civilians and you'll pay a steep price. Right now, many evil men and women believe the USA is weak and lacks the courage to right wrongs. Certainly the Russian tyrant Putin believes that, and so does some in the Chinese government. Back home, we now have many conservative people willing to give Assad a pass because they don't trust President Obama. Ironically, it was about 10 years ago that many liberal people did not want to move against Saddam because they didn't trust President Bush. Same mindset, different ideology. If the USA fails to act against Saddam, the unintended consequence would be a loss of respect from those who care about a just world. If we sit back and do nothing, we will set up a free fire zone where no weapons are off limits. Biological will be next. Mark my words. President Obama is correct in asking Congress to affirm his decision to punish Assad. The world needs to see exactly how our system works. Debate on the issue is good. But in the end, in the end, America needs to do what is right. We should use our power to protect the innocent if we can. Great Britain may not have the will to do that anymore. But we Americans should set a better example for the world. If we don't, if we don't, we will slowly lose the nobility that was gained by past sacrifice. Unfortunately, in this world, justice can be imposed by one people only, us. Yeah, silly. What Bill O'Reilly doesn't get is that every single empire throughout the course of history believed exactly what he's saying. So when it was the Roman Empire, they thought, well, we are the virtuous people and we are the people who defend justice and what's right. So obviously we are justified in invading these different places and taking it over. Whether it's the Romans, whether it's the Greek Empire, whether it was Sparta, whether it's the Turkish Empire, the different Chinese empires, the, you know, the different dynasties, or uh, the Malian Empire. Every single empire that has ever existed throughout time has told themselves these uh, special little lies where they say, oh, well, we obviously are always on the side that's right. We obviously always have everybody's best interest at heart. We are the protectors of freedom around the world. But are you really naive enough to believe that? Like, that's really, really sad. So if we care deeply about humanitarianism, which is exactly what Bill O'Reilly is saying there, then why did we not do anything when the Armenian genocide happened? But I actually know the answer to that question, because uh, Turkey is one of our biggest allies, so when they did something wrong, we just looked the other way. 
Why didn't we do anything uh, when there was a slaughter of civilians in Darfur, or the Congo, or Rwanda, or Mali, or the hard labor camps and concentration camps that exist in North Korea, where there are reports people have to literally uh, resort to cannibalism because they don't have enough food. They starve to death. They work them to death in those different places. But are we even considering doing anything there? No, we're not. Or how about in Burma, where there's been a dictatorship for decades? Nothing. How about Somalia, where uh, warring factions kill each other on a daily basis? Children get killed all the time in Somalia. Not even uh, considering going in there. But here is the list of countries that we have invaded since World War II. Now notice, the ones that have the real humanitarian crises, I just told you, and we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. We sit there idly and watch as these things happen. But here are the countries that we have invaded. Some of them, some of them, this is only a partial list. Guatemala, twice. Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Grenada, Korea, Lebanon, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Iran, twice. Libya, three times. Panama, Iraq, twice. Yugoslavia, Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Philippines, Honduras, Nicaragua. Here's a partial list of dictators that we backed. It would take me forever to go through all of them. Batista in Cuba, the Shah in Iran, Garcia in Nicaragua, military juntas in Guatemala, Bolivia, and Argentina, Marcos in the Philippines, Noriega in Panama, Pinochet in Chile, Suharto in Indonesia, Mobutu in Zaire. And again, that's a partial list. We often overthrow democratically elected governments to prop up dictators that will be kind to our government interest and our corporate interests. But Bill O'Reilly, he's ignorant, and he's a dumbass. So he falls hook, line, and sinker for the propaganda, and he thinks, well, no, we're, we go around the world and topple all these governments and prop up dictators because we care so much about humanitarian things, and we care about democracy. Really, then why are we the ones that are overthrowing the democratic governments and putting dictators in place? None of the arguments make sense.